What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. In today's video, we're gonna talk about modeling something that's got a little bit more symmetry to it. That's gonna be the treasure chest. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. And so in this video, we're gonna start speeding things up just a little bit um, and not just like recovering the same things that we've covered for the last 15 days. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by modeling out the height of my treasure chest. So I'm just gonna use lines in order to do this. So it's gonna be maybe 24 inches tall by 18 inches wide. And we're just gonna rough out a shape like this. And so in this situation, what we wanna do is we wanna use the tape measure tool in order to create a guide that's gonna be nine inches down, right? Because we wanna draw an arc across here. This whole thing is 18 inches. So half of that would be nine inches. So we're just gonna draw an arc right here to create a half circle and we're gonna use the erase tool in order to clean all of this out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line across here and I'm going to separate each one of these into a group. So I'm just selecting them, right clicking and making them a group. That's gonna be good because that way if we decide that we wanna open this up later or something like that, the lid will be a separate piece. And so what we wanna do now is we wanna use the offset tool and the push pull tool in order to create the profile of our object. So to do that, we're gonna tap the F key single click, and then we're gonna offset this in by an inch right here. And so what that's done is that's given, given us the profile of both the wood as well as the metal that's gonna be on this object. And so what I wanna do is I wanna offset this in and we're gonna say that our wood or our metal bands on this thing are maybe like three quarters of an inch. So 0.75 right here. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna give me my metal band pieces in here, which we can talk about in a second. But the first thing I wanna do is I wanna push pull this face over in order to create half of my treasure chest. So my overall treasure chest is gonna be like three feet wide, right? But I want this to be less than that. I just want this to have a thickness of maybe like 18 inches right here, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna use symmetry in order to not have to remodel things over and over again. So what I wanna do is I wanna take this lid, right click on it, and I wanna make it a component, and we're gonna call it lid half. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy. And then we're gonna use the scale tool. So S key and then tap control and type in negative one in order to flip this. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna give us two halves of this treasure chest. Well, the thing about that is that's going to allow us to push pull this right here and notice how that change is happening on the other piece as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on this. And I'm gonna make it a group again, just so my geometry isn't all merging in here, but I'm just gonna push pull this over to a width of like an inch like this. So that's given me one piece along here. Well, now what I wanna do is I'm actually gonna draw a line across the top just as a guide. So I'm just gonna draw a line right here. I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna divide that line so that I get um, some guide points in here. And so I've split that line, so I have a point right here. Well, then I'm just gonna take this face, double click on it, and use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy that aligns with this point right here. And again, notice how that's happening over here as well. But then I'm gonna push pull this a half inch this way, and a half inch this way, and now I've got my metal bands across the top. And now at the bottom, what I wanna do is I just wanna draw a line up, and an inch on each one of these, like this. And then I'm just gonna push pull this across so that I've got my metal band pieces. And notice how you can set these so that they uh, meet in the middle right here. We're also gonna do that on the back side. And then you can also come in here and you can use the erase tool. And you can just hold that shift key in order to hide these edges so that you don't have this like pronounced seam where these meet. Okay, and then here on the end, I'm just gonna go in here and I'm just gonna push pull this in by maybe we'll call it three quarters of an inch again, so 0.75 like this. And again, if you don't like the way these edges look, you can just double click in here and hide them using the erase tool. And then I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line up by an inch. We'll go ahead and push pull this out so that I've got this piece on the end right here. And again, remember because we did this with a flipped component over here, when we draw that on one side, it's gonna show up on the other as well. So now let's do the same thing with the base. The base is even easier. So we'll make the bottom piece a component called the base half. 
We'll flip it, move it back over. And then I'm just gonna take these edges and use offset and push pull in order to create this face. So again, we'll push pull by 0.75 and we're gonna go around and we're gonna do this whole thing. One trick is before you push pull this, if you just wanna take this piece right here on this face and just use the move tool in copy mode to copy that over like this. So if I copy it onto this side, what that's gonna do is that's gonna merge with this object. And you may have to do a bit of cleanup in here. Um, so it came in here and it like removed a face, but you can just trace across it. But that way you don't have to come in here and draw that manually anymore. You can just use what you've already drawn in order to do that. And remember, if you double click with the push pull tool, it's going to extrude things to the same thickness that you had them in here the last time you used it. So you can just use that to repeat that push pull over and over again. And then we're gonna use the erase tool. So E key, then hold shift and click and drag in order to erase out our seams. Okay, so now we need to add our rivets. So that's not gonna be especially difficult. Um, what we wanna do is we wanna start by drawing one rivet. So I'm just gonna come in here and draw a circle on the surface. So C key, then draw a circle. And in this case, we're gonna assume that we want our rivet to come out a little bit. So I'm just gonna find the center of that circle and just draw a line out. That's gonna kinda of act as a guide here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw an arc across this circle like this. And then I'll draw a line so that I can have a profile in here. Well then, we're gonna use the follow me tool. So I'm gonna click on the follow me tool over here, but then what I wanna do is I wanna select this surface, click right here, and then click on this object, and what that's gonna do is that's gonna rotate that or lay it along this path that we had selected, which was our circle. So then I'm just gonna draw a little line in here in order to close this in, and that's gonna be our rivet piece. And I'm just gonna triple click on this, right click and we'll make it a component. We'll just call it rivet. That may not be the correct technical term, but we're gonna assume that it is. So now we're just gonna use a lot of arrays in order to really quickly set these up, right? So just move tool in copy mode, set a base point, and you can set it maybe on this edge right here if that's easier for you. Remember to tap the control key and I'm gonna create some copies in here. And so in this case, I want the rivets to be basically at all of the corner points in here. And we may add a few more or we may not. We'll just kind of see how we feel. But I'm just going to use the move tool in copy mode again. Copy these down. Now, one thing to remember about this is if you put this inside of the component, then it's going to repeat over here. So I'm going to take all of these and I'm going to do a control X. I'm going to double click in the component and I'm going to do a paste in place. So you can click on the little dog and then look for paste in place in order to paste that inside of the component right here. And so I'm gonna speed this up a little bit, but first, before we speed this up, let's go ahead and let's create a copy of this object right here. And you can just do a control V in this case. And let's go ahead and let's add a couple of these to our curved face right here. So this one, you're gonna just do a little bit of manual work. Um, it's not gonna take you very long, but we're just gonna manually take this. We're gonna move it over so that it aligns with this face. And then I'm gonna use the rotate tool. So tap the Q key, and then I'm gonna tap the left arrow key to lock this to the green axis. And then we're just going to rotate this, whoops, so that it aligns with this face right here. And you may be able to come in here with the rotate tool in copy mode and actually copy this across. Yeah, your rotation kind of gets messed up over here, so let's not mess with that all that much. I'm just gonna take this, and I'm just gonna create a couple of these manually. And so I'm just gonna align this with the center of this curve right here. And again, use the rotate tool in order to align this. And then we'll do the same thing up here. And notice there's a little bit of a gap on this one, so I'm not gonna worry too much about that. You could either move this down a little bit, 
like this, or you could also right click on this and make it unique, and then just pick up that bottom geometry and just move it down a little bit so that it's inside of your object right here. It's really kind of up to you. And then we'll just pick these two objects up. We'll use the move tool in copy mode and we'll scale these to negative one. And then we'll move them back so that they align with this object. And then we're just gonna do the same thing where we take all of these, we do a control X to cut them, and then we're gonna paste them in place. And then from there, we'll just create another copy over here using the move tool. And so you should be capable of placing the rest of these in here, so I'm just gonna speed this up really quick, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so now we just need to add a little bit of additional detail to this. So we're gonna start by modeling out the handles. So to do that, we're just gonna come in here and we're just gonna draw a steel plate, and we're gonna assume that it's gonna be four inches by four inches. So we're just gonna rough this out with the line tool like this. And then we're just gonna push pull that out, quarter of an inch. I'm just gonna triple click on it. And I'm gonna make it a group. And so from here, what we wanna do is we just wanna make some hinges. So the hinges will be really easy. We're just gonna come in here and we're just gonna draw maybe a three, inch, three eighths of an inch circle. I'm just gonna move this out and align this with the face right here. And we're gonna push pull it. And that feels a little bit big, so I'm gonna scale it down just a little bit. And we'll just make a copy of this right here and take this whole thing and make it a group. And so now what I wanna do is I wanna rough out the actual handle itself. So to do that, I'm just gonna draw a profile in here or a path. And this is basically just me drawing the path that I want that handle to follow. So that you could basically say that this is the size of the handle that we're creating. So I'm just gonna take this whole thing and I'm gonna move it out a little bit so I can see it a little bit better. And so we're not really worried about this face in the middle, we're worried about this path that we're creating. So I'm just gonna use the arc tool real quick and you can just draw an arc like this. So if you tap the A key and then draw an arc across here, you wanna find that point where it turns purple and you wanna double click, well then, you can mouse over these other corners and you can double click in order to add that same curve. Well, now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to draw a circle in the middle here. And you can tap the left arrow key to lock this to this axis. And we're just gonna draw maybe an eighth of an inch circle right here. Well, now we're gonna go back to the follow me tool. So I'm gonna select this edge. We're gonna make sure that we pick up the whole path like this. But then we wanna activate this tool after you've selected the path. And then you wanna click on this profile. What that's gonna do is that's gonna extrude this to follow that path. So we're gonna take the whole thing, we're gonna make it a group, and then we're just gonna move it back right here. And then we can go ahead and delete out our path. And we're gonna take this whole thing, we're gonna make it a component and we're gonna call it handle. And we wanna do a control X, and then we wanna do a paste in place inside of this group. So now this handle shows up on this side and it shows up on that side. And then over here, we're gonna keep it simple, but we wanna add a little padlock. So to add the padlock, we're just gonna do the same thing, four inch by four inch steel plate. Push pull it out a quarter of an inch, but then we're just gonna rough out a simple keyhole. So now we've got a circle in here. We just want to draw a line down and across like this. Same thing over here. Then we're just going to take that key and we're going to push pull it back like this. And 
All right, so that symmetry is gonna be really important because it's something that we can use in order to really kind of cut our work in half. But leave a comment below, let me know if you have any questions. I will link to the next video in the series as soon as it's ready to go. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.